One of the single biggest questions I get regarding narcissists, or as I call them, extreme takers, is, Sven, how do I know if I'm the narcissist or my partner is the narcissist? How do I know? Because my partner keeps saying, no, you're the narcissist. You're the one that needs therapy. No, it's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. One of the surest ways to know, and it's not foolproof, but it's a simple litmus test to at least get you in the ballpark, is simply this, is to ask yourself the question, do I own my share of the problems? Do I own my share? Or potentially, unfortunately, sometimes you probably own more than your share. Narcissists don't do that. And you have to ask yourself the question about your, your partner. Does your partner own their share of the problems? They say, you know what, I'm responsible for this over here. And yeah, you are responsible for this piece as I see it, but I'm open to being wrong. And I'm also responsible for this piece. Does the person you're in a relationship with and do you own your share, put it out there, talk about it with your partner and apologize for it and change your behaviors as a result of learning from it. Do you do that and does your partner do that? Because the person not doing that is the likely the extreme taker or exhibiting extreme taker symptoms. Do you have the courage to ask the question? Do you have to, the courage to look at the real answer? Do you have the courage to acknowledge that you may very well be that extreme taker and, you, and or you may very well be in a relationship with an extreme taker? And the ramifications of that are, you can attempt to try to change this person, but you're going to have to be vigilant at every single fucking turn. You're going to have to be vigilant in standing up to them and not allowing that behavior. It's not just a matter of having boundaries. It's reinforcing those boundaries again and again and again every single day because that's the only thing that's going to change them. And here's the difference between you and the next person they're in a relationship with, potentially. The next person just naturally does it because they've healed themselves. They're not acting as an extreme giver, which you potentially have been conditioned to do and to be in your past, in your childhood, that the way you get love is by giving, 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 giving. And so you give and give and give and you have no boundaries and you just keep giving in hopes that you'll get a little bit in return. But that's no way to live. But the next person may very well already be conditioned to, no, you have to give to me and you have to own your stuff and I'm gonna hold you accountable. They may do it naturally, so it requires less effort for them. And why do they do it naturally? Probably because they went through the process at some point in, in life of learning that living as an extreme giver doesn't work. Unless, of course, you're in a relationship with an extreme giver, then it can be a delightful little thing. But when you get your ass handed to you enough times, when you get hammered in relationships enough, eventually, if you're wise, if you're doing the work, eventually you begin to learn to love yourself, to not only put up boundaries, but to hold your boundaries and to be adamant from the beginning when the problems are small. See, problems get huge in a relationship with an extreme taker. Problems get huge, but they start small. Small things become big things. And if you don't have the courage to address them when they're small, you're definitely not gonna have the courage or the strength to address them when they're large. This is why what happens in the beginning of relationships is so freaking critical because you have the ability to keep it small. It's like teaching your child manners or teaching your child good grammar, as my mother uh, taught me. It was just repeatedly in the beginning at a very young age. She didn't scold, she didn't put down, she just corrected me again and again and again, every single time pleases and thank yous and oh um or if i'd say something like well me and steve are going to the dairy queen mom would say steve and i she would just correct she would just correct there was no scolding there was no harshness there's no intimidation just a correction and she did it every time and she did it when it's small so that when you become older it's already in place well it's the same way in relationships if you start the corrections in the dating phase of the relationship in the very early parts and start making the corrections and not allowing someone to transgress your boundaries then it gets established and it doesn't grow bigger. It doesn't go from this to this. And that's what you're dealing with right now in your relationship, aren't you? The problems have gotten so big and the other person is blaming you and saying you're the problem. And the problem is that it started small. So at what point in your life do you have the courage to ask these hard questions? Am I owning my shit? Are they owning their shit? And if not, at what point do I have the courage to change? And it requires not just potentially changing, getting out of this relationship or standing up at every turn to change this person here. But ultimately you have to change yourself first. And what that means is you have to go through your own healing work of healing the crap that causes you to tolerate this stuff in the first place. That causes you to not stand up and hold and maintain your boundaries adamantly. See that because if you don't do the healing work on yourself, you're never gonna stand up for your boundaries and you're gonna just allow everyone to walk all over you. 
So do you understand that it doesn't matter what you try to do with your partner. You have to be trying to do that in yourself. You have to heal yourself first or you will never have the strength. You will never have the courage. You will never have the endurance to insist on your boundaries and to insist on being treated with love rather than someone just taking and taking and taking from you. Do you understand the difference? Have a kick-ass day.